is finally Friday, and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll make tonight's video shorter than the last couple of nights now that we are <clears throat> kind of in the wind down phase of our non event that we had today. We'll get into some of the details on what happened and what didn't happen uh, over the course of our Friday. First, a reminder I talked about this last evening. Uh, the National Weather Service office in Pittsburgh is doing a Skywarn Storm Spotter training session over in Mercer, 6 to 7 30 Monday evening. This is a free, a free event. And uh, as we get into Severe Weather Awareness Week in both Ohio and Pennsylvania, there'll be more opportunities in our viewing area for these Skywarn training sessions. <coughs> Every now and then they do a, uh, a virtual session. Uh, some of these are still in person, though. There's one in Austin Town and Mahoning County coming up in April. So we'll remind you of those. And this is your opportunity to uh, become a certified storm spotter helping us out uh, in the weather enterprise, whether it's us on TV or the National Weather Service, uh, learning how to spot different types of weather phenomena. And uh, again, that's especially important as we head into severe weather season. All right, believe it or not, we managed to pull off 0.7 inches worth of snow at the airport early today, real early today, before, of course, it just rained for most of the day. Uh, 0.7 is more snow than we saw in February and the first nine days of March combined. We had 0.4 in February, 0.2 so far in March before today, and then 0.7. Officially at the airport. Now, at any given point, we never had 0.7 on the ground, but in the little drips and drabs before everything just became pretty much liquid, uh, we did manage to pick up 0.7 inches. All right. As expected, you know, a little bit of grumpiness out there today uh, on Facebook in particular uh, when it comes to the uh, forecast. Just a reminder, it's not like we had a bunch of snow in our forecast. Just because we were talking about this all week as a possibility uh, that some of us would get enough snow to shovel and plow and be disruptive. Uh, we did not have a forecast that uh, had huge amounts, unlike, you know, if you clicked, went onto the Weather Channel app, for example, a few days ago. Um, you, you saw some pretty big numbers on there. Some other outlets were throwing out some fairly big numbers as well. We were much more conservative, so while it wasn't the greatest forecast in the world, it wasn't a huge bust either. We talked about everything being pretty much wet in most of our area, except for maybe the far northern and eastern parts of our viewing area. And for the most part, that was true. Now, <clears throat> we underachieved in the snow department, certainly in northern Trumbull and eastern Mercer and northern Mercer, the areas that we expected to see at least a few inches worth of snow. But, you know, we, we played up the fact that uh, the impacts would be pretty minimal in a lot of the rest of our area, especially once we got past the early morning hours. The uh, culprits, in addition to it being March and a lot of this uh, precipitation falling during the day, most importantly, the storm track. <clears throat> and we talked about this a lot in the lead up to today, that a little difference in the storm track would mean big impacts, <clears throat> big changes in the impacts for our area. The storm track was actually just a little north of I-80. The potential was there for the storm track to be more like this. That doesn't seem like a big difference. That's, let's see, as the crow flies, that's, you know, 50, 60 miles. But that's, that's very important in these borderline situations where the temperatures are near or a little above freezing. <clears throat> a little bit more of a a southerly track would have locked in temperatures that were a little bit cooler and probably ensured that we had a little more snow at least, more snow than rain, which is what we had for a lot of us today with temperatures at the airport dropping down to freezing at 10 o'clock last night. But then as the precipitation pushed in this morning, we were well above freezing, not only at the airport, but in most of our viewing areas. So this really short circuited any ambitions this system might have had to, to produce enough snow to measure. Uh, for the most part, you know, just a cold rain out there for today. Let's go into the weekend. Uh, our storm pushes away. Clouds dominate on Saturday. There'll be a few flurries around in the morning. The afternoon is cloudy and uneventful. One change we've made to the forecast for the weekend includes a higher chance for snow on Sunday, but this does not mean big impacts. This is another system that's coming during the daylight hours with temperatures above freezing. And so while I think we'll see more snow falling from the sky Sunday than we did today, uh, this is all going to be low impact, maybe a candy coating on the grass here and there, but I would expect roads to be largely wet on Sunday, despite <clears throat> several hours where snow is probably falling from the sky. And then we'll get into kind of a flurry and s scattered snow shower regime early next week. A little lake effect, a little lake enhancement with this. And could someone see some small accumulations uh, across our viewing area with lake effect and lake enhancement, especially Monday night into Tuesday? I think that's going to be possible. Certainly a higher chance of impactful snow up into the uh, primary snow belts of northeast Ohio <coughs> and northwest 
PA. All right, still struggling with this little tickle in my throat. I apologize. Uh, here's a look at our modeling for that Sunday snow. Taken literally would suggest, hey, maybe we need to allow for an inch or two. But again, I think this is too high with, with snow falling during the day in March with temperatures above freezing. So right now, our weekend forecast looks like this. 32 Saturday, 38 on Sunday. Midday afternoon snow on Sunday. It'll look like a snow globe at times, perhaps, but it'll be all pretty low impact. This includes for the uh, Mahoning Valley St. Patrick's Day Parade, which 21 WFMJ, always a proud sponsor of. I think there will be snow falling from the sky as we get into the afternoon, but a little mood snow, but thankfully low impact for everyone who is going to brave the cold and come out to the parade in Boardman. All right, a little oasis of warmth, relatively speaking. Coming our way towards the end of next week in time for St. Patrick's Day. But that's going to be the exception. Look at the next 10 days. Most of these bars are blue. Below average will be the rule for a lot of the next couple of weeks. Here's the 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Not much of a let up in this generally chilly pattern from coast to coast. This includes some southern locations. Now, it's not going to be freezing cold in the south, but... In most of the U.S., our averages are rising pretty quickly at this time of the year. And so in you know in a place like Dallas or Atlanta, if you've got a 55-degree day in mid-March, that's a pretty chilly day. For us, a chilly day means you know lower middle 40s by the time we get into that third week of March when our averages are uh, up around 50 or so. That'll do it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for your patience with my lingering cold this week. Thanks for your patience with the forecasts, which were difficult this week. I appreciate everyone for uh, who watches and puts their trust in us to give you our best estimate of what's going to happen. Sometimes the atmosphere is just is just gonna gonna win more often than not. We're gonna win, but sometimes the atmosphere does. Anyway, I'll see you back here on Monday for a fresh edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast.